Alrighty, well, Merry Christmas to me. It is Christmas, and I've opened an Ancestral Recall. Couldn't be better. This is a four-on-four. Four. We're drafting Alpha Frog's cube, and it's, in fact, Alpha Frog in the draft. So it's myself, Troll Ascetic, which is awesome. Troll's a very skilled drafter. Slacks and Updraft Elemental, who I don't really know too well. Slacks likes to brew. I do know Slacks. Also very good. Battle against Max Smith, Sandy Dog, Alpha Frog, a murderer's row, plus uh, my potatoes, who I also don't know that well, but uh, we're going to see if they're small potatoes or big potatoes. Uh, I'm going to take Ancestral Recall. Max passing to me, which, you know, me and Mac, we're, we're bros at this point, and we also draft very similarly. So I don't love when he's passing to me, and I love when I'm passing to him. But I opened a first pick Ancestral Recall. There's just nothing that can go wrong. Well. That's not entirely true. What's going to go here? Sandy's going to take Thalia, Confluence, Pyromancer, Birds, Inti, Watery Grave. Yeah, I'm not going to get anything super exciting back, but first picking Ancestral into... Ooh, this is going to be interesting. Do I want to hit Force of Negation or Fury? I think Fury is a reasonably better card. Um... And I think that's probably just enough for me to want to take it, even though I don't really want to stray from blue. Like, well, let me clarify. I'm going to have Ancestral Recall on my deck. That's not really the issue. The issue is it'd be a lot stronger to first pick a blue card, an Ancestral, then take a blue card, then take a blue card, and then decide a second color. But I think Fury is too much better that uh, I can't pass it up. A Braid, Force, Kiki, Crucible are going to go. Astral Dragon, I don't know. Maybe Misha's Workshop. Yeah, I don't really expect much back. I just think that uh, Fury is too good to pass up. Here I might Underground C. There's no red card. There's Chromox, which Chromox is also good with Ancestral because the extra cards from Ancestral make up for the, the Chromox card disadvantage. It's not a great combo with Fury, though... It's not like it's an anti-combo exactly either. I don't know. I might just take the Chromox. I love Underground Sea, but I have a blue and a red card. I don't have a black card yet. And Mox Ancestral is a pretty nice combo. There's also Snuff Out, but I think Chromox. And then now I'm just going to take Steam Vents. I, I like Xander's Lounge, but I just like Untapped Duels better. And Blue-Red, I'm high confidence enough that I don't think I'm supposed to take Blue-Red-Black that is always going to be tapped. So... Let's take that, pass up a bunch of lands, and yeah, there's an Exhum here. I kind of feel like red might be getting cut, though there's a Rampaging Raptor. Rampaging Raptor could be nice. This could be a blue-red kind of like tempo deck. There's also Odawara, which is a pretty solid card. I think I'm just going to take Odawara because it's just an extra spell, which I really like having access to. Oh, there's my reason to take the Xander's Lounge. I actually kind of like Decadent Dragon, but I'm not looking too much like a Decadent Dragon deck here. I guess I could be. I want red cards for Fury. The best card in the pack's him, but I don't think I'm supposed to take that. Maybe I take the Dragon, or I take Reckless Stormseeker. Stormseeker's okay. I, I kind of like Dragon a little bit more. Let's just take the Dragon for now, and then now, probably just take Flame Tongue. Just be Blue Red Mid over World Spine Worm. Sentinel, Fire Blast, and uh, Thunderball. Then I'll just take Consider here. I don't think I'm going to take Kaito. Not in a Zern Orb market. Artifacts has been seemingly pretty cut. I don't... It hasn't seemed like an Artifact deck has been open. So far, I'm still relatively happy with Steam Vents over Xander's Lounge, despite the fact that I have Dragon. Oh, Season Pyromancer came back. So did Basalt Monolith and Firebolt, and Samwise, but I'm going to take Season Pyro here. Season Pyro also makes me happy that I've got Chrome Mox. That's a kind of nice combo. It actually combos in multiple ways. So you can cast Season Pyro and discard Chrome Mox and get a 1-1 and kind of cash in your Mox for a new card, and that's pretty good. The other thing that it works with is Chrome Mox helps you empty your hand and play Pyro and discard nothing and draw two cards. So it kind of works either way, which is pretty sweet. Also, at this point, I have enough to pitch cast Fury, yeah, I'm liking where this is going. This actually, of all decks, would be the place to take Kiki, so I will, in fact, take Kiki Jiki now. Not a something I usually do, but we haven't seen any other twin pieces, and this could be an actual twin deck. Decadent Dragon, not really looking like the most likely to see play here, but it's possible, certainly possible. I just picked up another four and another five. Oh, wow, I love Vendillion Click in these decks. 
Passing exploration makes me sad because I love exploration, but we are very firmly blue-red here. Maybe Xander's Lounge will wheel. No, it did not. I'll take Seachrome because the, the twin decks often splash white. Burgie's not a playable card, and I don't really want either green card. So I feel pretty good about this start. Also, when Sandy's on the opposing team, having Flame Tongue and Fury in your deck, pretty nice. All right, let, all I need now is Twin Pieces. Ooh, the Raptor came back. That's actually good news. Blue has been relatively cut, but it doesn't matter. Blue can always be cut, and you'll play it. Having an aggressive red card wheel that maybe I will play, maybe not, who knows, just means I think an aggro red strategy is open in this seat, or at least open enough. And having Steam Vents plus Chrome Mox as a kind of fixing, alongside my best card by Miles, plus a pretty solid set of blue cards, Odawar also kind of counts. Um, Rex Age is so much better. But Sandy, like, never plays green. I'll just take Condemn. And look, I'll take Fire Blast. Fire Blast is actually not a zero percenter. And the fact that Mac passed me that last is pretty nice. All right, well, I'm going to have to return the favor. Mac didn't pass a single black card. So the fact that I'm passing both Mind Twist and Thoughtseize, I mean, he'll take Thoughtseize. I think it's a much better card. Means it doesn't really make sense to cut either. And Mox Diamond, again, perfect in the deck with Ancestral and Season Pyro for all the same reasons. It is a little awkward to have Mox Diamond and Chrome Mox because they both cost you cards. But honestly, when you play an early, you know, Raptor or Pyromancer or if we're lucky, like a Lelia or something, then it just works out fine. Oh, Fable the Mirror Breaker. Here we go. Yeah, Fable is just busted. So I'm happily going to take Fable and Deceiver Exarch has a very high chance of wheeling. Let's see. Meyer's going to go. Warp's going to go. Mindstone's going to go. Scrubland's going to go. Savannah might not. Black, green White's a lot weaker than Black White. So that's already four. Jar is five. Corpse Dance is six. So we just need one person to want Thought Monitor, Pulse, Iconoclast, or Mesmeric Fiend. Yeah, that doesn't seem hard. Also, Fable's the kind of card that makes the uh, Moxes a lot more palatable. And here we have Minsk and Boo. I don't have a Green Land yet. And there is a Wooded Foothills in the pack, so it's a little dicey. But Minsk and Boo is perfect with the Moxes as well, and uh, is the kind of card you want to curve into. There's also, if I didn't take Minsk and Boo, I guess it would just be Wooded Foothills. I think between Magda, Charming Scandal, and Dragon Rage, I'll get something back. Probe's probably not coming back, though. But I think the Dragon can go. I think I'm going to take Minsk and Boo. This is the spot where you're supposed to take it, I believe. And here it's Zealous Conscripts versus Jace Friend's Prodigy. Jace, obviously, with Ancestrals busted. Jace is just a much better card. Conscripts, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Conscripts might wheel, and with Kiki, of course, I would not mind it, but I think Jace is enough better, and I need more two drops. I don't need more five drops. I'm just going to take Jace. It's just so good with Ancestral, so good with the Moxes. It's good with Fable. Fable fills up your graveyard and cycles you through cards. I don't know. I'm just going to take that, and I'm probably going to follow up with Chain Lightning, which is great with Jace. Not really in a spot to want through the breach. We might want Seething Song if it comes back. Same with Grim or Rabble, but I'm just going to take Chain Lightning here. And we're set up really nicely to be blue red. Oh, look at this. Misty Rainforest is perfect. It gets Steam Vents or Forest. So it fixes for Minsk and Boo or the rest of my deck. That's enough to make me take it over Narset and Chandra. I just think I'm going to have enough playables here. And Misty is way too good at letting me actually cast my spells. So... Here, let's move this over. One of the things I like to, to sort, I'll, I'll talk about my sorting pattern here. I think you probably picked up on it if you've watched me. On the left, I have my creatures and typically things like that basically count like creatures. So like Minsk and Boo and Fable, like Planeswalkers can often go there. Um, though a Planeswalker like Narset, I would be less inclined to play there. And then I have two stacks of land usually. One is fetchables and fetches and non-fetchable lands or sometimes depending on what my mana count is and actually since seat chrome's gonna go I'll, I'll have my fetches plus like non-fetchables here and then my fetch my fetchable lands here so i can keep track then zeros then ones and so forth i only have one mana spells plus fire blast actually my spells are all really cheap um here i don't really want blood crypt as a playable and once again it's Deluge, Custodialich, Concealing Curtain. So it's like three different black cards. And Deluge is probably the best one. I could hate it. But I could also take Blood Crypt in case I want to play a Demonic Tutor or something. I have this deck in Dragon. I don't know. It seems, seems relatively free to me. 
And then here, oh, there's a tropical island in expressive iteration. So <sighs> trop would make it so we basically have perfect mana for Minsk and Boo. But iteration is really nice with two moxes and three one drops. I think iteration is broken enough. And it feels like I'm doing pretty well on fixing. Here, I guess I'll just hate draft a cut down because this pack's really weak and I don't think Mac's playing green and I think he is playing black. So that, that's my estimation there. Iteration also works really nicely as another card to flashback with Jace. Um, another way to get card advantage because I have these two moxes. But again, it works with the moxes because if you see a mox off of iteration, you can just play it and that's your card for the turn. It's a zero. It's great. Or... <clears throat> You can use iteration to make up for the fact that you had to pitch cards to moxes. Plus, a blue-red card is actually kind of nice to pitch to chrome mox. All right, I'm waiting for a couple nice wheels. Exarch did, in fact, wheel alongside Mindstone, Pulse, Mesmeric Fiend, whatever. Uh, maybe the, the Conscripts wheeled, but I'm not really holding my breath on that one. And then, obviously, the Magda went because that's the best of these. Do I want Charming Scoundrel or Dragon's Rage Channeler? I don't want Talisman, and I don't really want Delighted Halfling. I want to have a blue-red mana base. Mm, I've got some pretty good fours and fives. I think I just take Charming Scoundrel. I found this card to actually just be okay. Okay, so the Zealous Conscripts didn't wheel, but Chandra did. There's also Lotus Field. I don't really think I'm going to play Chandra. It's pretty expensive. I'm just going to hate Lotus Field because it's just the best card. Grim is a pretty solid card for this kind of deck. Don't care about Oracle. Oh, Raging Ravine, nice. That's actually a great pickup. So now I feel even better about passing that Tropical Island. All right, we've got a great deck going into pack three. Oh, okay. I, oh, passing to Sandy Dog, and I opened White Plume, Parallax Wave, Palace Jailer. Um, I have two Moxes. I have a Seachrome Coast. I have a Treasure Maker, a couple of them. I'm looking at this white plume. So basically, if I were to take a card for my deck, I guess it would be like Prismari Commander Pest Infestation. Factor in that white plume is just a broken card. I kind of feel the pressure to hate draft it. And then maybe I have a fetch land and a Seachrome Coast. I'll try to cast it probably. It's just too good not to want to put in my deck. Ooh, this pack is really bad. I guess Spellseeker does get Ancestral. So, got to give... You know, credit for that, I guess. <laughs> uh, buy use the wrong kind of land. Mm, yeah, I mean, I'll just take Spellseeker. I have so many threes here. I don't like that. Not in a spot to take LED or Echo, which makes me sad. But Taiga, if I take Taiga, I'll have excess green fixing to the point where I might be able to play other, or other green cards, like maybe early green cards. Alternatively, I could take Pentad Prism. It's a way to accelerate the big stuff and also fix mana for things like White Plume and Minskin Boo. Yeah, I actually think the Prism looks a little bit better to me here. I'm not like thrilled about it, but it seems fine. And then now there's Jace. Yeah, I mean, this is a fine Jace deck. I think this Fire Blast is going out. I think Jace is coming in. And don't care about Sneak. I don't think I'm gonna Mana Morphose. Ash Barons I think is just okay. Rampaging Raptor can probably go out. Maybe I don't start the Grim. Though Grim is a good way to use my graveyard. I don't have any graveyard things except Jace. So I'll consider the Grim Lava Mancer. I'm going to have plenty of playables. I'm not worried about that. I guess I have this Lotus Field. Honestly, Lotus Field could be something I could consider. Just because I'm now playing probably four colors. Oh, that's a late Wheel of Fortune. I do like Wheel of Fortune. It's good. Again, good with the Moxon. It's just the best card. There's nothing here that I really care about. All right, I'll take, I'll take Wheel. It's, it's solid. Wheel's also pretty nice with Fury. Just you pitch Fury, kill their things, then Wheel, and it doesn't matter that you pitched a, a card. It kind of lets you turn cards in hand into resources. I would have loved, instead of that pick, to pick up like another fetch land. Or a white duel, like that That Savannah actually would have been good now for this Misty to make white. But we'll see. We've got three more picks to pick up another duel uh, or two, if we're lucky, like a fetch slash duel combination. Mm, there's Mana Confluence. Oh, there's also Pestermite. Pestermite with Kiki is pretty nice. It's not 0% that we would see a twin here, 
Pestermite's also pretty good with White Plume, just when you're trying to win the initiative race. I don't care about Name Sticker, Goblin, or Show and Tell. So it's really Mana Confluence versus Pester, and one, two, three. I mean, technically, Pestermite could wheel. I don't think it's like, very likely that'll happen. I'll just take Pestermite. I kind of hate Mana Confluence anyway. Uh, I do like Spire Bluff Canal, and I don't need more expensive cards. Imperial Recruiter, no, it's not going to wheel because Revelark's in here to, to get picked instead. I don't need another 3-drop. I don't, I don't care about the Imperial Recruiter Kiki thing. I'm just going to take another land, and I get one more pick. If I could just get one more land, I would be really happy. This Charming Scoundrel is going to do some work, by the way, making treasures. Yeah, I'm happy enough with the Pentad Prism pick. And I guess I wouldn't mind a Counterspell. I don't have any of those, and that's a little bit disconcerting. But that 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 I can attribute a bit to Mac. I bet Mac has like a Counterspell or two that I would have liked to play. Mm, I mean, I think this deck's still pretty great. We'll, we'll see how it plays out. Oh, there's Dak Faden and Temple Garden. So Temple Garden is a green-white land that I can fetch off Misty. Dak is just a great card. I don't think Temple Garden's good enough to make me pass up a Dak Faden, I don't think. So this is 16 lands plus Chromox and Mox Diamond right now. Oh, a Land Cycler might have been nice too, but so it goes. Um, I think it is a pretty decent Grim deck. Here, oh, Prismari Command Wield, so did Red White Talisman, so, I mean, these are all, all somewhat playable cards. I do have... I'm going to have a couple of green sources for a Hex Drinker. I mean, maybe I just do that. Or I could take Aragorn. Aragorn also seems pretty great in this deck. Yeah, this, this could be an Aragorn deck. And then now I'm not playing any of these cards. I guess I'll just take a Char. Tiger didn't come back around. Oh, Sylvan Karyatid's kind of interesting too. Karyatid means, let's see, I have Misty, Mox, Prism. I'm just looking at Karyatid versus Waterlogged Grove. Karyatid would be pretty appealing here. Let's take Karyatid, and maybe I don't end up playing it. I don't think I'm going to get another land. But I'm not going to play Waterlogged Grove in this deck. This deck does not need a land that does that. And without the Karyatid, I've got exactly one green card, which I have enough fixing for. Oh, Manamorphos, actually a card I would be wanting to play in this deck. Okay, now I need to cut a couple cards. Maybe I cut the Grim now, because I have a lot of anti-creature stuff. I'll just hate Recurring Nightmare. Black is the only color I'm not playing. Um, yeah, now I need to cut like two more cards. I guess Molten Collapse is actually a card I could potentially side in. Yeah, maybe I don't. I mean, I, I don't mind the character that is even a pure hate draft. I guess with one forest, I'm st <laughs> last pick Imperial Recruiter. Someone took the Revel Arc. All right, let's take a look. Let's take a look at on uh, in a deck builder and see where we're at. All right, so ended up going to 16 land plus a Chrome Mox with Mox Diamond here. Two planes, one forest, three island, four mountain, and then all of my duels. Not playing the Lotus Field still. My last cut was Charming Scoundrel, and I actually ended up cutting the Imperial Recruiter because even with Kiki Combo, I just don't like Recruiter. It's just kind of slow. So that's what I got. My uh, team's got some nice brews too. Uh, we've got... <laughs> this is Jesse's Entomb, Imperial Serial Vamp, Exhumed, Time Walk, Witness, Beseech, Sneak Deck with a bunch of big things. Pretty cool. Uh, Updraft Elemental has a Lotus, which is nice, with Winter Orb, Tinker, Urza, Mind Twist, Sword of the Meek, and Thopter Foundry, Battlesphere, Bolus of Citadel, Mish's Workshop. So I like that. And then Troll. Classic black white swords to plowshares, curtain, copter, snuff out, pylon, catacombs. This deck looks excellent. No power. Oh, wait, no, there's a mox and a mana crypt. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to get them. That's time to battle Mac. Let's see how this goes. All right, time for round one. I'm on the play against Mac, and I have a keepable but mid hand. Drawing a mox would make this hand really nice. One thing that's a little awkward that I'll, I'll kind of see how it resolves is. Do I want to use Manamorphos to cast this Season Pyromancer? I mean, I don't really... Oh, there's the Mox. Never mind. We have a new plan. Mox. Discard Odawara. Cast Season Pyro... Actually, I think I should Manamorphos first. Well, hold on. If I cast Pyro right now, I'm discarding 
Kiki Jiki and Metamorphose. If I Metamorphose first and draw a land, that's actually worse for me. I think I just play the, the Seasoned Pyro. I think it works out better to do it like this. All right, because I get two one ones this way. Well, had I drawn, <laughs> had I drawn the uh, Mox, I guess I would have discarded. Oh, there goes my Minskin Boo. All right, well, time to draw Ancestral Recall, I guess. I did, in fact, draw Ancestral Recall. Mm -hmm. uh, I could Chain Lightning here, but let's just Ancestral. And send with these. And next turn, I've got Consider plus Play Ravine, and I have five power in play. That's not nothing. All right, Baleful Strix does get to block Seasoned Pyro. Also, if I find a removal for the Mesmeric Fiend, I probably just win. Exarch, I'll bin that. Wow. All right, well, if I draw all lands, I guess I'll still lose. But so far, so far we look like we've got a shot here. Let's play Raging Ravine, pass. Hopefully Mac Thought Seizes me, that would be excellent. Attacking with the Mesmeric Fiend, sure. I guess I wish I'd kept Deceiver Exarch now. And, oh, there's the chart, of course. That makes sense why you'd want to attack first. Come on, draw Thoughtseize. All right, land. Oh, I do like Flame Tongue. Let's go ahead and attack first. And I think I'm going to play the Flame Tongue because the upside of Flame Tongue resolving is pretty high. Though Mac has seven cards in hand. Actually, I'm just going to pass and, and use Season Pyro. Oh, mm. Mal Malcolm having flash did kind of get me there because I would have definitely used the the pyro or uh, played the flame tongue if I knew that Mal if he had tapped out for a, a tube drop or if I knew knew about Malcolm. Oh man, and there's Archon that could be bad too. Persist, yeah. All right. I'll sack a spell seeker, discard a mountain, or I guess I should have sacked a token. I don't know. Now I'm probably dead. Turns out drawing all those lands did in fact kill me because I'm not gonna be able to beat an Archon here. I need something more. Um. Well, that's a possibility. Let's go Flame Tongue. Target Archon. Chain Lightning the Archon. And then attack. And Hope that Mac doesn't have more follow-up, I suppose. All right, you go to nine. No play, end of turn, maybe? All right, all right, that's something. This is another reanimate. It looks like another reanimate to me. Oh, it's a deep cavern bat. That, that's not an animate. That's an animate. All right, I think I died. I'm at 11, yeah. All right, well, wow. I guess Archon of Cruelty is a pretty big game. Okay, so... I guess I could put in Grim Lava Mancer against Deep Cavern Bat and Mesmeric Fiend and Malcolm. That's probably enough. This makes me not want to play Wheel of Fortune against a Reanimator opponent. Don't think I want Fire Blast. Flamestung still seems fine. All right, let's try this. I'm on the play. I even drew Chrome or uh, Mox Diamond on two, too. That was an excellent draw, but... Not quite enough. Um, all right, I will keep this. This hand needs to consider into a land. It's basically a one land consider hand, except a little bit better than that because I get to lead on Mox Diamond here, and it sets me up to maybe have a turn to play, or I consider miss and then you know, don't draw lands, but that also can happen. <laughs> I would keep that hand again, though. Especially against a deck with a bunch of discard spells. Like, discard spells actually don't do anything against this hand, because either I hit lands, in which case I can play things, or I don't hit lands, and, uh, you know, the, the, it doesn't matter either way. Just my hand is all spells, so whether, you know, taking Dak Faden here doesn't really change too much. Uh, well... Whiffing on Consider, and then drawing Steam Vents, and then whiffing again. It's probably not going to do it. Thief of Sanity. Well, if I draw a land, well, it's not a land, but I guess Grim is okay. 
I basically kept a one lander on the play with consider and have not hit much, which again, I, I would keep this hand. Especially if I knew I was getting thought seized on turn one, I still have to imagine this hand's got a better shot than a than a six card hand. Of course, Mac probably hit ancestral plus two uh, two lands, <laughs> the perfect hit against uh, me being stuck on lands. But uh, maybe maybe we got a shot here. I mean, if I draw a land, it's not terrible. Okay. Well, expressive iteration is way worse than drawing a land, but it is something. So, Chronolox doesn't help me a whole lot. So let's just go ahead and play an island. Pass. I've already got one card exiled off Thief. Getting Shallow Graved, yeah. Discard Spellseeker. I'm gonna play Flame Tongue next turn. I mean, Archon when I have no creatures in play still does a lot of damage to me, but I guess doesn't uh, just end the game. I go to four here and I'm probably just dead. I'm gonna get to cast a Flame Tongue, but that's pretty it's grim consolation against a handful of spells here. What is this? Oh, Pentad Prism for one. Sure. All right, well, Flame Tongue Kabu. Eh, all right, that worked. I do have Jace. Mac has five cards in hand. The Archon's gone for good. I mean, it's not a zero percenter here. I don't love it, but I feel like I have a bit of a chance. Necromancy My Fury. Well, I mean... That's not actually even that good against Jace, though, is the thing. Okay, you get the Thief of Sanity back. Sure. Land would be pretty nice, because I can go land. Huh. I'm just... I'm going to... I'm going to play it a little safer. I could have gotten Jace, or played Kiki to copy Flame Tongue, but I feel like playing Chain Lightning into Jace is going to be better. And let's draw three. And let's put back... What do I want to protect the most? I think I'd rather cast Minsk and Boo next turn, so I'm going to put back Kiki Jiki and Minsk and Boo. Hit for four. Am I actually in this game? It kind of feels like I am. Malcolm, end of turn. I don't like that. Attack me down to two. No, I'm getting Shinobied. All right, all right. <clears throat> well, I thought I was coming back for like a second, but I couldn't do anything about that. All right, time for round two. Let's see if we can make up for a round one loss. That was kind of a beating, but I don't know it's not going to be with this hand. I guess I'll mulligan this as well. Okay, uh, I guess I'll mulligan that. And sure, I guess I'll keep this. Um, I'll put two back. I guess I'm putting Jace and Manamorphos back. Here I can go turn one, consider. If I draw a land, it's actually a pretty good hand. <laughs> cool. Uh, I'm going to cast consider on turn one. Hope to hit a land. All right, I guess I'll keep that. Play a land. I was really hoping <clears throat> to draw my land on turn one so I could play turn one Pentad Prism, turn two White Plume. I still have a turn two White Plume if I draw a land here. Um... Assuming my Mox Diamond doesn't get blown up. But we'll see. Mulling to five, huh? Don't love it. Don't love it. Mm, I mean, if my Mox lives, then... Yeah, maybe they just attack for one here. They don't have another play. No, they're playing... An, oh, that basically counts as not a play. All right. Let's go land. Because if I can draw... If I can play a land here... Well, I was going to say I could play White Plume into Aragorn, but I guess I'll just play Pentad Prism, pass. And, I mean, it's getting to the point where my initiative and Monarch cards are just not going to do it, so. Let's see what they have. They have five mana here. Presumably a decent play. Hmm. 
four mana floating, one more is like a Nissa or something. Or perhaps even worse, a pest infestation. <laughs> All right, we're, we're done here. Well, I mean, if we're not going to get to play magic, we won't get to play magic, I suppose. Uh, I will put in Grim Lava Mancer again. I do like it. Wheel of Fortune, I think, still probably seems fine. I guess maybe I'll cut Vendillion Click. And Pest Infestation is not actually good against me. I mean, I'm not saying it's terrible, but like my three artifacts, well, I guess the Fable is a little different, but the three artifacts I'll use up pretty quickly. So under normal circumstances, I'm not that worried about it, but yeah, I guess we'll have to see how this goes. Alrighty, on the play here, and I will keep this hand. The best card I could draw would by far be Chrome Box. I would probably just win if I just got to play turn two White Plume. But even if I don't, of course, draw Chrome Box, I still have maybe Chain Lightning if they've got a one drop, and then any land gets me a White Plume on three. So that seems like a reasonable start. And that white plume, depending on which land I can draw, can either get the forest for Minsk and Boo or island for Dak Faden. So, all right, well, Plains is a land. So, we are indeed going to get to play Magic. So, that's cool. Uh, hit. <laughs> Plains is a funny land to draw, but it, it's fine. I, I probably just get... Oh, they kept a one land Mana can. Interesting. All right, well, I guess I'll get a forest here. Attack, untap Grim, and then Minsk and Boo. And this will be about as lopsided <laughs> as game one, probably. And that's another Mana Dork, and that's another Mana Dork? That's a lot of Mana Dorks. Okay, uh, here, I'm just going to go Forge, and I think I'm just going to make the Grim bigger. Just attack with everything here, everything including Boo. Um, now I get to attack for 10 and then untap. I guess Minsk and Boo is who I'll untap. I mean, they're dead like a million different ways here because they either chump now and take seven and then fall to 10 next turn trap takes them to five yeah all right well let's go to game three see so, yeah, i don't want char on the draw maybe actually we'll cut wheel of fortune at this point paging raptor b click cut down maybe i do want v click here i'm just trying to think anything that would make me a little bit faster but i guess there really isn't anything except maybe charming scoundrel that just seems kind of weak and I don't think I want to add the fifth color for uh, Molten Collapse. No, maybe I'll just keep the wheel and hope to draw a double mox wheel hand or something like that. All right, on the draw. Let's get a mox, shall we? Um, no, this hand's just a mulligan. This hand's just too slow. It's got no early plays. It doesn't even have the right mana. All right, this hand I like. They're mulliganing as well. Honestly, I think Wheel of Fortune goes away. Oh, they're mulliganing five? Yeah, even better. I've got Spellseeker for Ancestral Recall, so that that is going to kind of be my card advantage engine here. And I get to play Grim. Another, a Mox Diamond would be a pretty nice draw to go with this Grim. Or a Chain Lightning would be nice too. Chain Lightning would be, in fact, an excellent draw here. Mountain's a pretty bad one, but, you know, is what it is. Let's see. Hopefully they don't have too sick of a three drop here. Tireless Tracker? Okay. Um, Manamorphose, huh? I'm going to Manamorphose, I think. Is that good? If I get blue-red, they have two cards. Yeah, let's just go for it. Let's get... Red, blue, because if I get if I do chain lightning exactly, then it would be pretty nice to be able to kill that tireless tracker before it gets a clue. 
Oh, they had a fetch land too? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to need JVP. Hopefully to find me a Mox Diamond would be a really nice one. Chain Lightning at this point would actually still kill the Tireless Tracker thanks to the Grim. I am going to have two cards in my graveyard regardless. Oh no, they're playing something else instead. Oh, like a Sika's Chariot or Questing Bee, something like that. Oh, Garrick Wildspeaker. And then untap two lands so you can use the Tireless Tracker, probably. Otherwise, the Grim is going to be really threatening. All right, this is going to be a close game. If I draw Mox Diamond, it blows the game wide open. Or Chain Lightning. Either of those would be quite excellent to see. All right, let's see if we can hit one of those. Mountain. Chrome Mox, okay. Interesting. Mm, does that help me? It does a little bit. Actually, not that much. Because in order to use Chrome Mox, I guess, I guess maybe I do imprint the Jace. All right, let's see what I can do here. What I could do is I can Grim the Delighted Halfling and then play Mox, imprint Jace, cast Spellseeker, get Ancestral. That actually seems like a reasonable play. Mox Diamond would have been much better, but I guess I can't complain too much. Spellseeker, Ancestral Recall, Mountain, Grim the Delighted Halfling. I think killing their mana source is going to be pretty good for what I need to do here. I don't know. They could still cast Nyssa. They can't cast like a Troxa now. They have that sort of thing. And next turn, I'm going to get to see a bunch of cards. So hopefully that can get me somewhere. They can crack another clue. I can actually chump a Spellseeker if I want to, which I might be doing here. We'll see if they make a beast. Presumably they have a land. Oh, that's a tap land. Okay. And... Yeah, I'll... No, they can't... <clears throat> yeah, no, I'll chump. I'll chump. Spellseeker's not doing a whole lot for me. All right. Time to draw some action here. Ancestral Recall. Action. All right. Time to use Jace. <laughs> this... Ugh, this game sucks. <laughs> I don't mean magic. I mean this particular game. Hmm. Um, I guess I discard Spire Bluff Canal, play, f play my Sea Chrome Coast, and pass the turn. So, I can use Grim, but the problem with that is I really do need to flip Jace to, to cast Ancestral again. The problem, I really don't want to chump with Grim either. Wow, drawing like a single spell would have been really nice here because this is just not going to do the trick. Oh, they have Oko. Yeah, all right, I'm pretty dead here. Because we're getting to the point where even if I Ancestral in some good cards, it didn't matter. I needed to spend my mana this turn. And instead, this turn, I did nothing. I drew... <laughs> <laughs> Five lands in a row or whatever. Let's see. So they're going to attack me for nine here. No, 11 here. I mean, I'm getting close to having to chump, especially if they're plus and Garrick. And then I guess I can trade for the beast by using Grim. Give up on flipping Jace this turn. Kind of operate under the assumption that I need to draw like a really good spell like even a season pyromancer really doesn't do it though because i don't have any lands to discard or uh, spells to discard to get one one so yeah i mean i guess i don't know I, it, it doesn't matter like i can't i can't win this game i'm not gonna crack their clue i'm gonna do this leaving ancestral in the graveyard and I'm going to take my turn. I'm going to go to seven. Sure. Haywire might. 
I'm going to draw a Dak Faden. Um, let's Jace. All right, I'll see if we can get one match, shall we? Alrighty, let's watch someone else. Maybe they can win a match. Uh, we're going to be watching Game 3 of Alpha Frog on top here against my teammate, Updraft Elemental, playing the blue-black Thopter Sword deck. They have a pretty cool deck. They have Black Lotus too, so let's see how this goes. Turn 2 Talisman is not bad. Turn 1 Mana Vault is pretty frightening. Gavin up here can have, you know, turn 2 Rabble Master plus a 2-drop or something along those lines if uh, the casting costs break correctly. All right, well, we're tapping the Mana Vault. So hopefully this isn't too savage. And Updraft Elemental also has Tinker in deck, so next turn we could easily be seeing a Bolus of Citadel or something along those lines. Let's see what Gavin's using Mana Vault to power out here. Staff of the Storyteller into Rabble Master. All right, that's kind of kind of what I said. Rabble Master plus two drop. And that's a pretty fast clock. Turn two Rabble Master. Staff to help refuel as well. This is also going to be getting counters off the Rabble Master, so you're never going to run out of that. Let's hope that the play here is a Tinker Citadel. I guess it's not if... My teammate's playing a Watery Grave first, but this could also be the One Ring. Oh, there. Very nice. All right, so the One Ring means next turn, Updraft Elemental's not taking any damage. Gavin is going to get to make another Goblin with Rabble, draw a card with Staff, and it's setting up to a pretty big turn the turn after. But that one turn of protection combined with a bunch of extra cards, should give Updraft a pretty decent shot of uh, being able to assemble something good. All right, Monastery Mentor, so we're, we're all tokens here. And uh, Gavin's going to be my round three opponent, so it's also kind of nice to get to take a look at what we'll be playing against. Fury looks pretty good in this matchup. All right, we've drawn two more with one ring. It's up to seven cards in hand, but have to have something pretty good. I guess next turn it's three plus eight. 5 is 8, 9, 10, 11. So not technically lethal, but, I mean, any spell makes the Mentor bigger. And with a one ring and play with two counters, you're probably not going to win if you just take a gigantic hit here. Well, Black Lotus, that's a great start. I like to see it. All right. Are we just hard casting Citadel? That's kind of what it looks like. Okay, well, this is a gambit. Let's see. Well, for being a land, at least Fiery Islet lets you cycle the top card off if it's another land. Oh, we're tapping two mana. Oh, we're casting Third Path Iconoclast and not doing anything else. Huh. Well, unfortunately, I think that was just a bit of a misstep because now I guess you chump Rabble Master. I mean, you don't just die, but if, you, if Gavin has any way to remove a blocker, you basically do. And taking a big hit just makes Citadel not very effective next turn. You even took a damage to cast it. So don't love that play. We'll see how it turns out. I'm going to get... Hmm. I'm going to get attacked. That said, if the land was on top, which it clearly was, it's uh, not like Updraft was in a great spot either way. And... Certainly, as someone who's O2, I'm not uh, complaining about uh, <laughs> my, my teammates' moves in any way, shape, or form. Mostly, it's just that looking at Citadel, this is a kind of a bad position, and Third Path keeps you alive technically, but also doesn't really set you up to win the game, and I think that's a pretty big distinction. All right, so Gavin, draw off staff, get lost the Third Path. So we're getting attacked for... 8, 9, 12, and then going to 1 off of the 1 ring. All right, I mean, not 0% to win. Just not, you know, very likely to win. Let's see. So go to 1, draw. I mean, there are sequences involving Thopter Foundry, Urza. Like, cast Urza. I guess you can't even cast Thopter Foundry. No, you could now. I guess you can't actually cast Thopter Foundry with without taking damage. So 
This is unfortunately going to mean that I've got to win my last round, and even then, I think we're in a bit of trouble because Updraft is now 02, I'm 02, Troll Cedic is 1 1, so that means we have five losses. Slacks is 2 0. So, all right, we're down three to five. We've got a puncher's chance, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think that my, my fearless teammate here is going to take this one down. All right, we're sacking map tokens. Uh, I think that'll do it. I don't, I don't really think there's a way out here, but I'll stick around for a sec just to see if somehow there is. <laughs> sacking another map, map, map token, revealing a walking ballista, which you could actually play for zero if you wanted to, but that doesn't doesn't help much. And uh, especially given these two sources of mana are pain lands, that'll do it. All right, time for round three, my round three. We're on the draw here, playing against a red-white. And I'm a little annoyed that this deck is uh, 0-2. This deck is pretty good. I think just I have struggled with either playing a land on turn 2 or not playing, you know, a land on turn 8. <laughs> I haven't had a whole lot of the things in between. So hopefully uh, this match will be a little different. You know, or, or not. Uh, the, the sick part is... This hand's actually really close to keepable. I have a Fury I can pitch. Any land lets me Ancestral? Hmm. All right, after talking with the team, I think I'm gonna mold this hand. And yeah, this hand is better. Uh, I will keep this, and I think I can actually bin Metamorphose at this point, cause, and then I'll probably imprint Consider and Play a turn one Jace into a turn two deck. All right. Yeah, I mean, this worked out a little bit better. All right, so let's go ahead. Imprint consider, cast Jace Vrin's Prodigy. I just don't think casting turn one iteration makes sense. And uh, Jace is a reasonably good turn one play. Looks like it, maybe it's getting bolted or something. Yeah, all right. Hopefully, Gavin plays like an artifact that I can steal. That'd be pretty nice. Oh man, Esper Sentinel so annoying here. Uh, yeah, I guess you can draw a card. That's fine. And then I'm going to steal the Esper Sentinel. And the next turn I'll iteration though. Actually, should I have played the planes? It's kind of awkward though. Because if I, no, if I play the planes, then, uh, oh, I guess I have to block. Then I iteration into a land, have to play that land, and then Spire Bluff stuck in hand here. Oh, Aragorn. All right, I mean, I guess I'll, yeah, discard the two cards I was going to draw, play a land, and play Aragorn, become the Monarch. I've got a 4-4 Lifelinker in play, and hopefully Gavin doesn't have another removal spell, because if that's the case, I actually think I'm doing awesome here, because... He can make a goblin attack with both. I can block Rabble Master and gain four life, kill the Rabble Master. Or he just makes a goblin and attacks and I block it. No, well, I was hoping, you know. I guess I'll get Forest in case I draw Minsk and Boo. How about instead I lose all my stuff? <laughs> uh, one day, one day I'll get my due. It's not this draft, though. This draft is just... Put it just having the... It's like, I don't know, you've seen the, you've seen the games. I don't need to elaborate. And now I'm going to lose the Monarchy and lose Dak Faden, so Path to Exile, huh? All right. Well, this iteration better be good. Okay, iteration. Uh, sure, it's not great, but I guess I'll do it. Minsk and Boo. Make this into a 4-4 four, four, and I guess I'll hold for a turn. I, I'm not taking the Monarch back, but what I am getting to do is I can block Inti if Inti attacks and or trade for Rabble Master if not enough things come to attack Minsk and Boo. So that is a possibility. Because then if if Minsk and Boo survives, then trading off Boo is fine because I get my uh, hamster back. And then on my turn, I hope to draw something. 
and we go from there. That's my plan. All right, we're going to attacks. Okay, they're all attacking Minsk and Boo. Well, I guess we'll see what Inti flips here. And as things, if, if Minsk and Boo's gonna die, I'll probably block Inti. If it would, and it would die if everything attacks it. If Minsk and Boo wasn't going to die, I would obviously just trade for Goblin Rabble Master. And then hope to draw Ancestral. Because if I Ancestral into like Fury, or if I just draw Fury, honestly, then this isn't the worst position in the world. But obviously the way things are going now is not ideal. Okay, so yeah, they're all attacking Minsk and Boo. And Inti is going to discard, I assume something, yeah, Lion Sash. And make one of the goblins bigger, which makes sense because I'm blocking Inti here. Block Inti, Minsk and Boo down. Stoneforge Mystic, okay. Into Cauldra Complete and, Fu all right, Fury. I mean, I guess I attack, take the Monarchy and I'm gonna V-click Gavin and take Cauldra here. What I could do to waste his mana is I'm just gonna wait, I get, I become the monarch. I'm going to play a tap steam vents. Draw end of turn. Instant? No. I think he didn't play a land last turn. I, I've got to try to make him waste the stone forge mana. Okay. This, this could be good. And V click you, take Cauldra, leave you with a bunch of double white cards. Hopefully no planes, and then I can block the Rabble Master. Um, no planes, no planes, no planes. Because if I block Rabble Master, I take six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then go to 13. Oh, Rabble Master is not attacking. I don't love that. You know what? I can't beat a second plane. So Parallax Wave is going to end the game if it hits regardless. All right. Yeah, I'm going to block Rabble Master. And take six, assuming the figure gets pumped. Or five if it doesn't. Maybe he wants to play Mana Vault this turn. That also is reasonable. I mean, I still think if I draw Fury, I could win this game. Fury might even be able to beat a planes here. But we'll see. Didn't draw planes yet. Yeah, I didn't draw yet. All right, Fury. I'm at 14. All right, I'm going to attack and draw a card. Mm -hmm. And I probably wasn't beating a planes regardless, and there's a pretty good chance Gavin's got one by now, but <laughs> it's still, this is, these, these have been a nice sequence of draws. All right. Uh, let's go to game two. Okay, so I want the Grim. I've played against creature decks every round, so I guess the Grim could have just been in the main deck. But yeah, I'm going to put Grim in the deck. Definitely want to take out Wheel of Fortune here. And don't like Decadent Dragon or Rampaging Raptor. No, Charming Scandal, no. I, I like where I'm at. All right, let's see how this goes. All right, on the play. Let's go. Well, I mean, I am going to keep this hand. It's got Ancestral, so let's go ahead and Ancestral. Unkara, Unkara. Fortunately, I'm going to have to discard unless I draw a Mox here. So let's just cast Iteration. Maybe I'll hit a Mox off that. No, I hit Fury, though. So I'll hit Fury in hand, Aragorn on the bottom, and Exile Metamorphose. And... I'm just going to discard Pestermite, I think. Yeah. I think that was hoping to hit Mox Diamond or Chrome Mox there to avoid discarding, but I, you know, it's fine. Ancestral and having to discard one is a cost I'm willing to pay. 
I get to slam. Fable is going to be the first card I want to play here. And then what I really hope is he doesn't Stoneforge, though. I guess Stoneforge is kind of interesting. No, this thing is stealing Cauldra with Dak doesn't actually do anything because you they, they keep the germ token, so you'd have to be able to move the sword off for that to be good. So what I need here is a little breathing room to just play this fable. I think that would help a lot. I do have a deck or Season Pyro or Minsk ready to pitch to Fury, but I, I, I kind of want to get two creatures off Fury. I don't want to just get one. Okay, well, there's the Stoneforge. What I might do then is just Vendillion click here, because there's just no way he's going to run into the same play. So let's put Cauldra Complete on the bottom and leave... Um, This hand here, Plains Parallax Wave, huh? Hmm. I'm gonna take it. I don't think I care about that. And then Blade Splicer is the play here, or Mentor. What would be really nice is if I drew a green source, though Blade Splicer would be awesome for me too. I would deck Fade in it probably. I suppose you could play Parallax Wave then. Hmm. If he plays Mentor, I'm definitely gonna gonna Fury the whole the Stoneforge and the Mentor away, because I really want to do that before Parallax Wave hits. Doesn't really make sense to play Magda instead of one of the two three drops, and it doesn't really make sense to play Unexpectedly Absent here. I wouldn't imagine. So yeah, I think we're looking at. Mentor or Blade Splicer. Oh, Magda. Interesting. Oh, and a figure. Sure. What is he going to do next turn? I think I just go Fable. I could Fury, but I kind of feel like I could just hard cast Fury next turn. And I'm just going to leave back Vendillion Click. If he wants to, first of all, he has to have drawn the land, which he doesn't have yet, as far as I know. And then he, if he wants to play Fable or a Parallax Wave here and start exiling like these things, I just don't think that's going to be quite as effective. Especially since if I play Fury. All right, well, we'll see how it goes. Exile that, exile that. Now I'm just going to play Fury and exile those. I think that's decent. I don't know. Okay. Um. Oh, Kiki Jiki, interesting. Uh, let's discard the Pestermite, but I think I can discard Dak Faden and Minsk and Boo here. My Planeswalkers, yeah. And then I'm going to go, actually, let's see. I think I'm actually just going to cast Fury here. And then if he wants to save a bunch of his creatures, he has to parallax wave them and I'll hit those two and you can save them both parallax wave goes to one but then I'm setting up next turn kiki jiki fury is my plan you might actually parallax wave the stone forge too okay well, we'll see all right wave goes down to one I pass the turn Wave goes down to zero. He's got five cards in here. He's got Unexpected Absent, Blade Splicer, Mentor. And I'm kind of hoping Gavin doesn't have the mana for Absent. Well, he does now. All right, Mentor. And oh, his path. Yep, and I know his last two cards. <laughs> this draft has really been a study of like, well, I hope he doesn't have this and just has it every time. But, you know, it's okay. It's okay. We still have... We still actually have some pretty good moves here, honestly. Mm. Let's see. I'm definitely going to Chain Lightning the Monastery Mentor. The question is, what else am I going to do? I think I go Chain Lightning here, and I could play Kiki. But that just gets hit by Unexpectedly Absent, I feel like. 
So maybe what I do here is I go Pentad Prism Grim Lava Mancer. And then next turn I have enough mana to go Pyromancer Kiki. Okay. Grim Prism for two. Pass the turn. Parallax Wave fades out, but that's not even that bad for me. Like he gets his two small creatures back. I get my Vendillion click. And then I get to Vendillion click, target him. He probably uses Unexpectedly Absent. Otherwise I'll take it. I don't care about the Blade Splicer. I'm a little surprised Gavin didn't flicker out his Stone Forge and then it comes back and he gets uh, Cauldra. It even stacks so that the Stone Forge trigger would go on the stack and then the V click go on the stack so I wouldn't even be able to click it. But this works out all right. You can also just you can put Pentad Prism on top if he wants. I mean, the Grim is also like kind of a threat, so it feels like getting the Grim out of here is probably something he's interested in doing. Yeah. Okay, Grim goes on top, and then it plays Blade Splicer, which I, because I think I allow the Blade Splicer. Honestly, I, I might have to wait on this uh, Season Pyromancer. The reason I'm letting him have the Blade Splicer here is because I really don't want him to have a draw a removal spell. Because currently he doesn't really have... He can attack the Monk token, that's fine. I'm going to get to do a bunch of Grim Lava Mancering next turn, I think. Let's see. Yep, here's the Splicer. Then on my turn... Grim... Kiki Jiki. Let's see. Uh, figure. Let's just pass here. And I have Copy Grim Lava Mancer at my disposal. And what I think I'm going to do is not worry too much about the figure of Destiny getting pumped because I'll have Season Pyromancer plus potentially assorted tokens to block next turn. And I want to be able to use Grim as a blocker. So I guess I'll just let him attack with everything. Magda, block, take three off Golem. Let's see, Grim blocks. I could also block the Golem with the Vendillion click and then use Grim on the Blade Splicer. That is also a pretty legit option, I feel like. So I've got some moves here. I've got some moves. Let's see what, what Gavin's got. All right, he's got something. I really need him not to have another removal spell. He's used Path, he's used Absent, Parallax Wave is done. I know Burst Lightning is in his deck somewhere. This Blade Splicer's gone. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see. I think even a removal spell wouldn't necessarily get me completely, but I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Okay. Two mana? I was just going to attack first, sure. Uh, Kiki Jiki the Grim. Okay. Magda makes a treasure. Block, I think block here. Grim the Blade Splicer, exiling Minsk and Boo and Dak, I guess. And now these trade, the click and the golem trade. You can pump the figure or make me take a little bit of damage, but if he spends a bunch of mana on the figure, then next turn I can double Grim the figure if I want to. And it costs six mana, right, to, to go Super Saiyan there. Okay, that died. Those trade, I take one point of damage. Does he have like Winds of Abandon or something? Oh, touch the Spirit Realm. Okay, get my Kiki Jiki out of here. 
that's fine. Oh, we might get the Grim out of here. That's interesting. I guess that is that is a play he could make. Pestermite's already in the graveyard, so you might be thinking that, you know, it's just letting the Kiki live is okay. No. All right. Yeah, it seems like it would be tough to, to, to get the Kiki there. Oh, White Plume? Sure. Mm-hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Let's get another mountain, mountain. Season Pyro. And Reflection of Kiki Jiki plus White Plume or Season Pyro is probably enough to, to win the game. I'm, I'm also going to Grim Lava Mancer that figure of destiny now. Well, you can't level that up. And I think, I think we might be going to game three here. I mean, we'll see, but... I think figure of destiny is like one of the few things that could that could actually get me here. <clears throat> wow. Use reflection on white plume, untap white plume with reflection. That's that's sick. Uh, let's not attack though. Let's just untap the grim. End of turn, I'll probably use reflection of Kiki Jiki on white plume and like yeah, that that'll be it. Okay. Got a game. <laughs> Ooh -wee. Um Yeah, I mean I don't think I want any of these things. I think I think we're ready to battle here. Alright, game three time. Let's get a mox diamond, but with also lands to discard, because we've had a couple mox diamond no land hands. Uh yeah, I've got to keep this hand. This hand. It's got turn one grim. I can fire off iteration on turn two if I need to. And it's got Exarch into Flame Tongue, which is pretty good against a lot of aggressive starts. Plus, if I iteration into a Mox Diamond, that would actually be so sick. I put a land in hand, exile the Mox, play the Mox, discard a land, then use the Grim. Gavin Mulligan once here. Let's go Spire Bluff Grim. Grim Lava Mancer has been like a real overperformer for me just in general. All right, Selfless Spirit I'm totally fine with. Oh, well, that's a play. Let's do Pentad Prism. And I am not going to trade. I think Grim's going to be better this game. And giving up a point of damage doesn't really make sense to me. Or rather, offering the trade and maybe losing a point of damage isn't a big cost. I don't really want to offer the trade. All right, so now, oh, interesting. I was definitely gonna slam Flame Tongue, but Fable is pretty sick. No, so is Flame Tongue. Let's just go Flame Tongue. Nug the Golem. You can sack the Selfless Spirit to save it if you want. I would rather just kill the Golem. And I would be pretty surprised if Gavin didn't let me. Or rather, if he didn't stop it with Selfless Spirit. But yes, it gives him a choice. But I feel like it's a choice that I would be happy if he made the other choice. Because my hand is actually pretty stacked. The, the main weakness my hand was is that or my hand had is that it was a little slow, but drawing Pentad Prism really helped out there. I unfortunately do have to take three here. Okay, what do you got? Stoneforge Mystic. Oh, that. Okay, don't like that. Okay, let's draw. So. I think I'm going to iteration here because there's a couple cards that would get, let me use Grim this turn. Mox is one of them. So I'm going to put, let's see, Mountain in hand. Exile Mox. Oh yeah, Mox is so good here. Mox. Oh, he's going to kill my Grim in response. Fair, fair. Unexpectedly absent the Grim. Um, yeah, I can't do anything about that. I'm at 15. 
how much damage do I care to take? I guess I don't really want to take a bunch of damage. So I'm going to attack with the Flame Tongue and pass the turn. He's going to play... He's going to put Cauldron to play, maybe? And... Yeah, I don't have the Vendillion, unfortunately. But what I am going to do is let the Cauldron hit the board. I'll let the bodies hit the floor. Deceiver Exarch. This just prevents so much damage. Tap the germ, and it even blocks the, the goal. So now I've got... That prevents a ton of damage. I will happily block here. If you're going to use a removal spell on my Deceiver Exarch, then I am thrilled. Burst Lightning or something. Oh, touch the Spirit Realm. Okay. And then now, let's go... No cards in hand? Alright, let's bash. Jace... Bounce the germ. Play the grim. Probably just gonna let Jace die here because I don't really want to chump the, the golem token with my flame tongue. And if Gavin missed, which I really hope he did, he's gonna sack the land and now he's just basically never gonna equip Cauldra. If he drew a land for the turn and went from five to six lands, maybe there's a world where he does, but I think here. He's also just going to attack Jace with everything. I'm just going to allow it. And then and then actually Flame Tongue's just kind of doing work here. Would be nice if Gavin didn't have a play this turn. Uh, figure's not too bad. All right, so draw. Oh, Fury? Yeah, I'm going to cast Fury. That's, that's what I'm going to cast. Let's go one and three. And then Grim the Figure of Destiny. Leaving Iteration because I have Jace Rin's Prodigy. And then Smash. All right, all right. Now now I think we're pretty close to a lock. I mean, Parallax Wave. Oh, Comet, don't hit us X. Okay. Comet getting back Selfless Spirit, Absent, or Figure is not going to do it. And we got a match. Mm, boom, boom, boom. It's, it's just like the, the meme where you're just like the guy doing the victory lap and spraying champagne and it's got the medal and it's like in fourth place. That's me going one too. But let me check out on the team and uh, see if that can get us at least a tie. Well, Slacks went 3-0. Troll went 1-2. I went 1-2 and updraft 0-3. So that's a loss, which kind of stings because I think this deck was really good. I mean, it had two albeit bad moxes, but two bad moxes, an Ancestral, a Fury, Fable, Chain Lightning, White Plume, Minsk and Boo, like, this deck was not short on high quality cards, and it had a Misty Rainforest, a Steam Vents, a couple other duels, like, I didn't really run into color issues that much, and even the other cards here... We're pretty solid. Like, yeah, look, if I cut Wheel of Fortune for a Lightning Bolt, this deck would have gotten a lot better. But overall, I think the deck was good. I really struggled with just a bunch of really horrendous hands and unfortunately didn't really get there. But that'll do it for today. I hope everyone who celebrates had a wonderful Christmas. Uh, I sure was hoping for one with a little bit more power, but I guess Ancestral will have to do. And uh, you know what? The world marches on. I'll be back tomorrow with another draft. As always, I appreciate it. And you know what? I really appreciated everyone who's watched the channel this year. I've loved getting to play a ton of cube. And the fact that folks are enjoying it and watching really makes me happy. It's its own Christmas miracle. <laughs> As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with another cube draft. Maybe some more wins. We'll see. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.